Hello again. I am Dr. Fife, and this is uh, the solutions for question one and two from our self quiz 1.3. So, in this question, we have a pond that initially contains a million gallons of water with some amount of chemical in it. You have water containing uh, uh, one one hundredth of a gram of uh, of chemical per gallon that's flowing into the pond at a rate of three hundred gallons per minute. Uh, the pond mixes the uh, chemical and water up, and there's an outflow uh, where water flows out at the same rate so that the amount of water in the pond remains constant. Uh, assume that the chemical is uniformly distributed throughout the pond. So we're going to draw a rough sketch showing the flow of water and mixture entering and leaving the pond, uh, giving initial values, flow rates, and amounts. And uh, I just took a picture uh, from, on, from online somewhere that has an outlet and an inlet and there's a little bit of mixing up, uh, but assume that everything is well mixed uh, from the inlet to the outlet. So we know at the inlet, we have one one hundredth of a gram of Kevin Co per gallon, and it's flowing in at a rate of 300 gallons per minute. And then for our outlet, uh, it's flowing out at the same rate. And because the amount of water remains the same in the pond, and because A is, well, I'm going to let A represent the amount of chemical in the pond at any time, then we'll have A grams of chemical per 1 million gallons flowing out. So we have our inlet, we have our outlet. And the initial condition is some unknown amount of undesirable chemical, uh, which we can write to it as A of zero is A sub zero. Okay, so that's our, our rough sketch, more or less. Uh, and then we want to. Uh, give the differential equation and the initial condition whose solution is the amount of chemical in the pond at any time. So the equation is, it's the rate of change of chemical over time. So dA over dt is, you want to uh, take the amount of chemical entering the tank, which you get by multiplying by the rate that the chemical is entering times the rate that uh, water is being pushed into the tank or the pond, 0.01 times 300, and then subtract off the rate at which chemical is leaving the tank. And it's leaving at 300 gallons per minute. Uh, the amount of chemical in the tank at any time is eight grams, and there's one million gallons of water in the tank at any time. So you have eight grams over one million times 300. Notice that the units work, the gallons will cancel and you have chemical, grams of chemical per minute. A is measured in grams of chemical, T is measured in minutes. And the same thing for the outlet. You can simplify this uh, 1 one hundredth times 300 is 3, and then uh, when you multiply 300 times A and then divide by 1 million, two of those zeros will cancel to give you 10,000 at the bottom. You get 3A over 10,000. So this is our differential equation along with this initial condition. And that's question one. And then question two says, 
how much of the chemical will be in the pond after a very long time? Uh, does this limiting amount depend on the amount that was present initially? You can actually get this without solving the differential equation uh, if you just find the critical values. And remember that for a derivative, you find critical values by setting the derivative equal to zero. So if I set the derivative equal to zero, that's going to give me my maximums and my minimums, uh, or where it's increasing, where it's decreasing. So uh, set 3 minus 3a over 10,000 equal to zero, and then uh, solve here. I just brought the 3a over 10,000 to the right. Uh, multiply both sides by 10,000. 3 times 10,000 is 30,000. And then divide by 3, and you get, sorry, you get a is 10,000. So uh, a is 10,000. That could be a minimum. That could be a maximum. Uh, uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to do a, a real quick uh, line chart and look at where a is 10,000. And on a graph, the T is typically graphed left and right, and the A would, would go up and down. So my number line is going up and down. There's my A is 10,000. Uh, and that breaks my number line up into two regions. I have numbers larger than 10,000 and numbers less than 10,000. So notice that when A is greater than 10,000, so just choose a number like uh, 20,000 and substitute in to your derivative. If A is 20,000, you're going to get 3 times 20,000 is 60,000 divided by 10,000 is uh, 6, and 3 take away 6 is negative 3. Notice it's negative. For any value larger than 10,000, the derivative is negative. And so on my number line, I'm going to show that it's negative in this region by drawing a down arrow. And then if I choose a value where A is less than 10,000, I probably should have a zero there because you can't have a negative amount of chemical. Uh, but but that's, that's fine. Uh, when A is less than 10,000, our derivative is going to be positive, and you can choose a, a number again and substitute it in. If I choose uh, 5,000, or let's do 6,000, because that will work out nice. Well, uh, whatever, it's not going to work out real nice. But uh, five or six thousand, whatever. Choose something less than ten thousand and substitute it in. If I choose five thousand, three times five is fifteen, so I get fifteen thousand divided by ten thousand is one point five, and three take away one point five is one point five. The important part is that it is positive, and so when a is less than ten thousand and greater than zero. Uh, my slope is increasing. So this is called a phase portrait, and it's showing that if your initial values were greater than 10,000, then, then uh, over time, if you look at the limit as t goes to infinity, over time, this graph is going to get closer and closer to 10,000. And if I start with less than 10,000 uh, grams of chemical in, in the pond at any time, as T goes to infinity, the amount of chemical is going to be uh, increasing. It's going to be getting closer and closer to 10,000. So 10,000 is the limiting factor. It's, it's the limit uh, as uh, T goes to infinity of the amount of chemical in the, in the pond. 
When you solve the equation, if you take the limit as t goes to infinity, you'll see you get 10,000 as the answer. Okay, so that's this question. Uh, and thank you for watching.